everybody welcome back to my channel it's your girl mercy and i'm back with a very special video so i have begun a black love series for the month of february because it is black history month and it also is the month where love is celebrated and so i thought what better way to you know honor that than to share my platform with married couples um, in the black community to give their love story and their journey to marriage and finding love so I hope you guys enjoy this series. It was very like touching and encouraging to me and I wasn't even expecting, you know, to be so encouraged. So I know it's gonna bless and encourage you. And I just wanna shed light that it is possible to have a healthy and godly marriage um, in the black community. And so I hope that you are encouraged by this series and I hope you stay tuned to the end because they're gonna give some really great advice to singles who are seeking marriage as well. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next clip. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Mercy and I'm back with another video. This one is very special because I have my friends here with me who I coordinated their wedding. And so yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Uh, I'm Mark Hool Joseph and this is my wife, Ty. <laughs> yeah, I'm Ty Kia Joseph. I go by Ty. Um, I am from originally from Haiti. Um, she is from Florida, yes. and uh, we met here in Orlando uh, at church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we met at church. What um, year is this? What year is this? It was 2013. 2013. That's, that's a long time. Oh, that's a long time. Oh, don't do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which I was babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we met at New Life uh, Church in 2013, where we were both attending at the time. Um, but I would say we walked by each other. Um, I think we truly, really met each other um, when we were um, on a mission trip in, in Haiti. So she was jumping rope um, with the girls. Um, I believe we were at a school and she was wearing a red bandana. Uh, gray basketball shorts, <laughs> Reeboks. She had gray Reeboks on, a white T-shirt, and she had braids. Right? Yes. Yeah. I do. Is it was it love at first sight? Did you remember that? Girl. Girl. Yeah, Girl. yeah. I think it was. I think it was because um, <laughs> uh, that day, um, it just I don't know. It was just something. A veil fell off my face, Ooh. kind of like, Ooh. and. I really saw her that day. Like I saw her heart, I saw her differently in a way that I hadn't seen her before. And I was like, I'm gonna holler at you. I'm gonna holler at you. See what's up. I know that's right. Uh-huh. Tell, tell your side. Look, <laughs> um, so funny, we did meet in 2013 and we had been going to the gathering with our, um, our college ministry. And so we would have the occasional run-ins or we sit and all talk and chit-chat, but never looked his way, never thought anything romantic about him. It was just like, hey, he's just one of the dudes. Um, and then in 2015, I still didn't know all this went on. We were jump rope with the kids in Haiti. Um, and then I just know after the mission trip, so we went in 2015 on a mission trip. After we got back, he messaged me on Facebook. Because um, I posted, I was a big Facebook person back then, and I posted, I was like, dang man, I want some ice cream, who trying to slide? And he messaged me on Facebook, and he was like, let's go, I got you. And I was like, oh, this is weird, I never really talked to you like that, but you said, let's go. So, um, and then after that, he, he never really go nowhere. Mm. <laughs> so when did your fitness change thing? Was it that little date that y'all had? No, it wasn't. Um... <laughs> so for me it was just ice cream um mm -hmm. we we talked for several weeks after that before he finally was like i like you and i was like that's awkward <laughs> and at the time it's funny because we were trying to actually get him and one of our other friends to kind of talk at the moment and I was like, oh no, we can't do that because she likes you and that's weird. <laughs> so that was a whole thing. That was a, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother episode. But there was drama. Um, so after that, you know, we we decided that we would we would start dating, but we wouldn't tell nobody. 
I think that was like an un- unspoken rule, like we was just chilling. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it was like maybe a month later that we actually started talking regularly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very low key, that we thought anyway. Okay, so this was what? This was still in 2015? Mm-hmm. 2015, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it would have been if we went on a mission trip in May. Yeah, May 2015. So then June was when we would have actually started to date. Mm-hmm. Quotation. Quotation. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we were slick. We thought nobody knew. So when did y'all start telling people? Well, how long, how long <laughs> did time pass before you started telling people? Or did people find out? I think people found out. <laughs> uh, it's better, yeah, it's better to say that people found out. Yeah. Um, I think the way people found out was very unusual because what ended up happening was um, she ended up being pregnant mm. with uh, oh, you just went right in there I went straight <laughs> in there right. she ended up being pregnant with um, Zion mm-hmm. um, and then it all just blew over so the cat blew over and it was a lot it was a lot of hurt a lot of pain um, essentially the way I can sum I can sum it up is um, our relationship was without we didn't have any boundaries we didn't have any accountability and we reaped the consequences of that. So let's back up a little bit. Back <laughs> yeah, let's back, back up a little bit. bit. <laughs> so in the pro- in us trying to have a relationship without anybody knowing, mm-hmm. that's where we didn't have that community. We didn't have those. Um, you know, those friends that's like, okay, bro, like, let's chill out. So we were spending a lot of time together in secret, in private, um, by ourselves. Um, so people did have an idea. Yeah, but even our pastor would be like, oh, I see something. What's going on? Because we were together a lot. Um, but in church, we would sit on separate sides. Like, we never, and they were like, okay, you guys are doing a lot to try to not be together. That's yeah. weird. Um, but when I did get pregnant, that's when I think everybody in the church found out. Like, I think our inner circle kind of knew we were dating, but nobody knew officially. It was like all assumptions. Yeah. But when I did get pregnant, that's when, you know, we we told our pastor um, and our first lady and then things did blow up. And not necessarily from the standpoint of the church, but just within our own selves, because then we had to reckon with not having that accountability, not having those boundaries. And unfortunately, but fortunately, um, we are birthing a child in the chaos. So, like, describe how you felt, you know, when you found out you were pregnant and you had to tell everybody or you had to tell <laughs> the pastor. And how did that go? Man, so when I found out, um, it was at a very, very bad time. Um, we had just buried my cousin and I found out the night of her funeral and I just remember thinking oh god I'm next like I'm just about to die right here because this is not this is not going to work out um, I was like because I was a virgin up until I met him and so I didn't meet we didn't start dating until I was 23 I think I was 23 so I was like dang we were like all this time I waited I was, I was like my husband my husband and so instantly, I was like broken because that vow that I made to myself, I'm like, okay, now there is going to be, I knew I was dealing with it internally because I was, I, I know what I did, but it was like, now I'm about to have to face everybody and everybody's going to know what you did. And it was just that shame um, immediately took over and I wanted to hide. That's all I remember. I just wanted to hide. And at that point when I found out, I didn't want to be seen by anybody. Um, and so I told my mom first. My mom and my best friend, um, they we were at the house. I took the test because I was just like, I something right. So I took the test and I immediately started crying, like not just a tear, like I was bawling. And my mom's response was not what I wanted because I was expecting her to be upset and to kind of have like, that whole, oh, I'm disappointed in you. And she wasn't. And I I didn't like that because I was like, no, you should be scolding, scolding me right now. 
And she kind of embraced me and was like, it's okay. Like, we'll get through this. And it's weird because I was like, no, you should be mad. Like, I need somebody to be mad. I need somebody to tell me that this is not okay. This is not what you, you should have done it and things of that nature. Um, but I remember telling my mom, I was like, I can't do this. I can't be a mom. I can't have a baby. I have to get rid of it. Like, I can't do this. I, I'm not going to tell him. And my mom, the, for the first time, she looked at me and she said, no, you don't tell him. And whatever you guys decide between the two of you, that's what y'all are going to decide. And so, what mama says goes. So, I called him and I said, we need to talk. We got to talk. And I went over and I just showed him the test. And I was like, here you go. So how did you take the news? Um, I think, I think j just like Ty, um, I was broken. And I think the news was just, it exposed my brokenness, um, if that makes sense. And just like her, I also had vows. Um, I was a virgin up until her too. And I had made a vow. Um, the vow that I had made to God was I wouldn't kiss anyone to my wedding day. And instantly, I just felt like my vulnerability, my brokenness was just out there in the open. Um, I knew not only that my brokenness was exposed, but I also knew that there was a lot of pain that was going to come. Um, I knew that she was going to be, she's hurt. Um, I was hurt and then the thought of bringing someone into uh, bringing a child into something that is broken broke me even more um, specifically because I am a product of divorced parents I understand the pain I understand how difficult how tough it is I didn't want to bring someone into that environment um, so yeah when she told me that uh, I was silent um, which is what I tend to do when, because I was processing. It was a lot to process. It was a lot to think about. Um, but then we had we had several conversations after that. Um, I think it, it took me a while to really get to let the news settle. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of great after that. It's kind of blurry um, what happened after that. I think after. Um, I sat with the news for a little bit, and then I went. I spoke to pastor at the time. Um, well, she's still, still pastor. pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I stepped down from what I was doing at the church. And I remember uh, one of the conversations we had was, you know, about marriage. We weren't ready. Um, I wasn't ready. Uh, she wasn't ready. And I was like, oh, we just go and get married because of a child. This is not going to last. Um, just in my stomach, like just in my heart of hearts, it just didn't feel right. So um, one of the stories that, uh, actually I told her about it, one of the stories that people would often use, um, one of our people in the church would um, have kids before they get married is, hey, David, you know, had a kid with Bathsheba, got married. So. I decided in that moment, we had been doing this without God, so I'm going to try to bring, I need God in this right now, because if we're going to make a decision like that, we want to ensure and make sure that God is in it and that he's leading us. Um, we made enough of a mess already, so we're going to let him take over. So that's what we did. So um, I did that. Um, do you want me to get into the story about, uh, so... I went and I looked at the story uh, with David. I believe it's in 1 Samuel chapter 12. Um, where, Sam, uh, where David, um, the Bible says it was during a time of war. He was supposed to be at war. Uh, but he wasn't. He was at home. And while he was at home, a man looked out the window and he saw this beautiful woman just bathing there. And he was like, hey, I'm a king. I'm a snatcher. So he took her. I guess he smoothed her in the... In, and the palace or whatever, and the Bible said he ended up sleeping with her, and then uh, she sent word that she was pregnant. 
So David decides, you know, instead of running to God at that moment, he decides, you know what? What I'm going to do is let me bring her husband home because he was in war like he was supposed to. Let me bring her husband home and maybe I get party with him a little bit and then send him to her. That way I can be like, well, that's actually your kid. That's not mine. But instead of doing that, Uriah came back to David and he was like, I can't do this. You know, I got soldiers. I got people in war. I got to go back to the field. So Uriah did not sleep with his wife that night, right? And the Bible says that when he didn't do that, so what David did um, instead was he decided to put him in the front lines because he's like, you know what? If I don't do this, later on when the midwives give birth to that baby they're going to be like well Uriah was at war during that time so whose baby is this and then there's a p potential that you know Bathsheba would get stoned and all that stuff so David was actually trying to cover up what he did so when I went to God and I said God so is this something I need to do he was like no because what David did, he wasn't trying to please me by what he did. He was trying to cover up the wrong that he did at the time. Um, and he was like, that is the same thing that Adam and Eve did. When they sinned, instead of running back to God, they decided to cover themselves with fig leaves. So I was like, all right, so I'm away. And whenever God decides and he gives me the direction, I love this woman. Um, but right now I know how broken we both are. And we cannot make a decision like that. So I decided, you know, we weren't going to get married at the time. And then I just gave it up to God. And I'm like, when the time's right, you'll let me know. So that's how it went. So how old were you at this point when you were making this decision? Cool. Uh, I was, um, <laughs> how old was I? So she were, you were 23. I was 21. I was 21 when I made that decision. Um, Irresponsible, never had a job in my life. Uh, the only thing I knew was school. Um, so yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. So y'all hear all of this from him. <laughs> let me let me back it up because <laughs> this is this was such a a pivotal moment. Because yeah. we were both young, but we had two completely different upbringings, two completely dynamics. So as he's dealing with this one, this side, that's what he dealt with. On the other side, I came from a family where I had to work all my life. Like, I've had a job since I was 16. So, I'm known to, I'm, I, like, I prided myself in making sure that my business was handled. Like, I wanted to be the rich aunt, okay? I never wanted kids. I never wanted a husband. Like, I was just, I'm good with jet setting across the world, making things happen, being a boss. That's what I wanted. Um, so this man came out of nowhere, wasn't looking for him, wasn't, I'm independent, I don't need no man, I shot it on you, man. Um, came out of nowhere, and now we're in this relationship, and now, mind you, we started dating in June of 2015. I found out I'm pregnant February of 2016, March, technically, March of 2015, March 15th of 2016. So we not even in this thing for a year for yet. Year. Yeah. Okay. So we're dating, and yeah, of course, not having boundaries that sets everything a wire. Like it, we're, it's just chaos, and we're back and forth because he's in ministry. They had deemed him our chaplain of our college ministry at that time. So he, as y'all can tell, he's a whole. He has the the pastoral spirit. And I'm out here just trying to figure out my life. I'm trying to figure out where God is leading me, what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and I'm like, the whole time, I'm, I find out I'm pregnant. I'm like, Lord, what is going on? These people about to hate me. I done took they, look, their chaplain. They're going to be like, she a heathen. I'm, I'm a whole Jezebel out here in these streets. Um, it's how I felt. So, again, I wanted to hide. So, I'm telling him this. Um, and I, I talked to my pastor because my pastor was a he was my father figure. Um, and I was like, Yo, this is crazy, I don't know what's going on. And they're like, Oh, you need to get married. And I'm like, Absolutely not, I am not about to get married to this man. We might even get along at this point, we're gonna be divorced within a year. Ain't no point. This is this is foolishness. Like, the only reason for us to get married is to 
try to psych people into thinking that, oh, they got married, then they had a baby right away. Exactly. And the optics for me, I think that's my whole, I hate that you have to present yourself a certain way um, within our faith. And I'm like, you know, we need to be real. And at this point, I was just like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. It doesn't make sense um, because there's going to be more pain at the end of mm -hmm. it. So we didn't get married, but we also didn't stay together. We ended up separating, going our, going our separate ways, giving birth to our son in November of 2016. And we, we were separated for like two years. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. But you were co-parenting and everything? We were co-parenting. We're co-parenting. That's a whole other story. So, <laughs> see me, I don't deal well with just um, being able to, to, you know, separate myself. I have to separate myself. Yeah. So, I left the whole city. I left Orlando in general. Really? Yeah. I moved to Gainesville. Me, my, I packed me and my baby up and we was out. So, we completely left. Because I couldn't deal with you being right up the street. And knowing in my heart, like I still love this man, mm -hmm. but we can't be together right now because yeah. he's doing his own thing. Uh, like there was a, there was a, we blaming each other. This happened because you. This happened because of you. And it was just we weren't, we weren't, yeah. we weren't, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't mentioning. We weren't. Mm -hmm. It was it was like, <laughs> and so I left. I left. I found a new job. Um, we moved to Gainesville, and he was born in November. I was out by January. So um, it was me and my two month old son, and we was we was out, and Daddy was here in Orlando. Was I? You stayed for a minute until your lease was up, and then you went to well, you went to South Florida, but you no, still had to. I went to South Florida, so I would come, so I would come here mm -hmm. one one weekend a month. Yeah, we met and one we weekend a month in Orlando, because since I still had my um, since I lived at the point, and I still had my lease. Cause it wasn't expiring until July, so I would come here every month, and it would meet here, and I would have time for the weekend, right? Yep. There you go. <laughs> and I still had my lease too. Look, I left everything. I had the lease here and everything. I I wasn't gonna pay to break it, and I was like, since we gotta meet in the middle anyway, because he went to South Florida, and I was in Gainesville, and Orlando was that central point. I was like, while he has his son, I'll stay at my place for the weekend. Wow. So how long were you in Gainesville? So I was in Gainesville for a year. Mm -mm. Ten months. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. no, because I didn't move back here until well, but still I was in Gainesville area. I didn't move back to Orlando until twenty eighteen. Until May of twenty eighteen. So I was in North Florida area from January of twenty seventeen until May of twenty eighteen. So almost a year and a half. Wow. But God is good and we remained co parents. Great co parents. We no, didn't get along. Again, man. We we didn't get along personally. <laughs> but, but we were great co parents. Listen, I, look, I, my child has the best father in the world. Um, so he would come visit, he would come up, I would take, you know, Zion down there. And it was just a really awkward, very awkward time because I still love him. I still, I, I still desired a relationship with him because I'm also a, a product of the well, he wasn't even married. <laughs> <laughs> My parents were never married, but they were together forever. And when I was in kindergarten, they finally separated. Um, and went their own separate way. So I'm like, I didn't want that for my child if I ever did have a child. And I was like, I have to keep a relationship and open, you know, an open relationship with his father because I never want his father to feel like I'm trying to keep him away. Like, cause you know, you have those bitter baby mamas. And I was like, God forbid, because my, my husband's Haitian. And um, they, they, they have their own <laughs> ideologies about us American, black American women. Um, and I was like, I can't be that. I can't be that stereotype. I can't be that bitter baby mama. Like, I was like, no, there has to be an open line of communication. Um, I want him to always feel like he's welcome. So he would come up and visit. We would go down and visit. Um, great co-parents. And I think the turning point in that was, I kind of, I finally was just like, you know what? Like, I'm still in love with this man. Guy. Like, I feel like he's my husband. Like, I, I knew that. But I wasn't 
I wasn't ready. We weren't ready. We both had so much growing up to do. We were so young. Um, I had, he was, he literally finished his last semester of, of college the week after we, no, the month after. Uh, two weeks after Zion was born. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. He graduated December, that, that December. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we didn't even get to experience life outside of college. Like, we, we weren't ready for this life, but circumstances and decisions that we made, we had to, we had to make those choices. Um, so then fast forward, how we got back together, uh, what was it? Zion's first birthday. Mm -hmm. We were having a party and in Gainesville. in Gainesville and I told him, I said, listen, we need to talk because I'm, I'm going to just put it out here. I'm going to just, I'm going to just put it out here and let you know all of the things. Because there was so much that I was holding in. And we just had a very long conversation about just the the way things happen. I didn't tell him I'm feeling. I didn't tell him I was like, <laughs> I couldn't do that. Because I was like, you can't know that. But I can at least be honest with you and tell you, like, okay, I felt this way about how everything transpired. Um, I hate that it had to happen this way. And we were just very, it was a very vulnerable moment. And he shared some things with me. And I was like... Okay, like I see, like that's my man for real. Like this is my man. Um, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'll let you go. I'll let you talk. Um, yeah, for that that first party was was a lot. It was um, his first birthday party, trying to put the balloon columns together, and um, I think so. There was a she asked me to do a. Uh, slideshow um she asked me to do a slideshow for zion's pictures and stuff so we could have it playing in the background and she i guess she didn't think i was gonna do it so um so i did it and she really liked it um everything was just it was just going really well but what really broke the straw for me because during the whole time we were co-parenting i tried really hard to keep my feelings out of it um so whenever we met it was always like professional. It was like, you know, okay, I'm going to do this. Whole business like transaction. Like whole business <laughs> transaction. So I kept it very like professional. I tried hard. Um, and whenever I came, I tried to be like an asset when I was there, help as much as I could. Um, but what really broke the camel's back that day was when I was about to leave. Um, what I had never told her before that was, um, every time I was coming to see them, she thought I was coming to see Zion. Every time I was coming to see them, I would get excited. But every time I was going home, I would be crying. Whether it would be in a bus or the train. And that day I was getting ready to leave and Zion was in my arms. And then I said, all right, Papa, he's gonna go. He hugged me. I think, what, he was one, yeah, he hugged me. Uh, he did not care, like the whole party, he did not care about the party, he didn't care about the cakes, um, cause he was tired, so he hugged me, and then I said, alright Papa, I gotta go. So I went to hand him away, but he held on. So, as soon as he held on to me, I just couldn't hold him anymore, I just <laughs> bust out crying. I was like, just falling, I think my mother-in-law, well my future mother-in-law was sitting right there, uh, uh, she, I, were you in the room? Yeah, your mom was, she was there in the too. room. My mom was there. I just cried. I, I didn't care about it because I had tried for so long to hold it together. And I just started crying. And then I was like, I want my family back. All right. I was like, this is it. Like, I want to marry this girl. Um, I love her. Um, I love our son. I love what we have. And then from there, that's when I was like, all right, now I'm going to start praying about it. Like, is it time now, God? So, yeah, so I decided, I, I started praying about it. Um, I was like, God, is it time? Because um, it was, it was 2000, that was 2017? Mm -hmm. 17. And I didn't get anything. I didn't get an answer. Um, I was like, okay. Uh, but I just felt it so heavy in my heart. I was like, God, like, is it time? Is it time? I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm not going to ask you anymore because I was getting one of those silent. Um, God was silent. Like, he didn't tell me anything. He didn't tell me what to do. 
So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. But it's so it's so interesting because God was faithful during that whole time. Oh, wow. um, because you know, like from the outside looking in, you could be like, you can be looking at someone going through something and be like, oh, he's being punished by God and or this and that. But he was so faithful. There were times I was in the train, like just in my feelings, just crying. God was just sending random people to encourage me, random people to uplift me. Um, just, I was just so grateful to be able to, to go see them. You know, a lot of times, I think we had um, that conversation maybe once or twice. She would say, you know, just one weekend a month. Like, I was like, I am glad I get one weekend a month. Um, I choose to look at it that way. Instead of looking, that's all I get. I'm like, I maximize what I get. So during that time, God began to change my perspective. It, he began to change the way. Like, I, like looking back now, he needed me to mature to a point before that decision was made. Right. Um, and it was, I believe, 2020. 2020. Yeah, 2020. Um, I prayed about it in August. Because you had asked me. Cause she kept asking me, she was like, all right, so what are we doing here? Okay, but you can, you jump ahead. Oh, you jump ahead. No, 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 we did. So we ended up getting married on the that's anniversary of us getting married. Yeah, that's a whole, whole other story, Mercy. We can talk about that on the camera. Um, but um, we ended up getting back together after a long, just long conversation. We both we both still had the feeling we loved each other. We knew that. Um, and we knew it was there. It was just a matter of making sure that this time it would be a God thing. Yeah. It would it wouldn't just be us out here trying to do it alone, you know, making sure that we were both in a position where we were allowing God to lead us. Um, so July 5th of 2018, we made it official again. Um, and then in that, everybody knew, we didn't try to keep it a secret this time, y'all, because we, we were doing good. We, 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 we set boundaries. Yeah. Um, we were not we were not um, fornicating, Lord, praise the Lord. That's <laughs> we was we was doing good, y'all. We, we 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 were like, this is what we should have done the first time. We yeah. were like, we not gonna reenact that. We were gonna we're gonna do it the right way and had those you know had that accountability um, and just praying and making sure that we were we were doing it right. Now, I was impatient. I was like, okay, bro, like. <laughs> What are we doing here? Because how long are we gonna have to wait? So 2019 roll around, ain't no engagement. I'm like, <laughs> I ain't, I'm not doing this for three years. And it's like, we already got a kid, like what's going on? So I remember at that year mark, I was like, all right. Um, <laughs> so what are we doing? We're gonna, make, we're gonna, make this we're gonna actually, why is I'm like, we're actually going to uh, do this thing for real? I mean, we already got a kid, bro. Like. We, we don't got time to wait. Like you really gonna do this? Cause I'm not gonna, I'm not, you're not gonna be my boyfriend for the next six years. All right, I'm not doing that. I'm like, our kid is already like three and you still my boyfriend, like what's up? So he's like, oh, one day, one day, one day. And I kept hearing that one day. And I was like. She hated that one day. One day you gonna get here tomorrow or you finna go. Mm -hmm. And so I gave him an ultimatum. I was like, listen. <laughs> We need to be talking about something real here. Um, are we getting married? Is this what you want? Do you see yourself here? And he affirmed it. Like, yes, we're going to get married. That was are my intentions. But one day. <laughs> okay, <sorry. laughs> One day doesn't sit right, but okay, cool. <laughs> and so now you can tell your story. You can get into the 2020 when you pray. Oh, then I prayed later. in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so I prayed in 2020 and I began to, um, I'm trying to remember because I wrote it in my journal. Um, I prayed in 2020, um, right before we went to our trip uh, in Savannah. 
Mm -hmm. um, which she thought I was going to propose on that trip. Ooh, that was a big moment. So, uh, <laughs> so I, we went on that trip. Um, we went out. I set up a whole picnic. We went out. And I knew she thought it was going to be a proposal. Um, yeah, hold up. Let me set the scene. He's not setting the scene. My man's had a whole, like, charcuterie board. He had wine. Okay. It was like, oh, you, you hear me? It's giving romance. It's giving proposal. Oh it, it's on our anniversary because uh, we went for, for the 4th of July. We just went as a family just to go. Like, my mom was there. My best friend was there. Her mom was there. So I'm like, oh, this is a thing. Because I'm like, you're okay. You went into all my people's idea. Like, this is about to be a moment. And so he, he prepares the charcuterie board, and it's all cute. And he's like, okay, make sure your hair is done, and you know, wear something nice. And I'm like, okay, sir. <laughs> so we get there. We're on the we, we at a picnic, so and I I'm, so many mosquitoes, y'all. Anyway, um, but we're on this blanket. He sets the mood. There's like the lights. Um, it's it's sunset, so you know you got the the nice little ambiance. And, What's that like called again? Uh, I don't know. The photographers have a name for it. Uh, the golden hour. Golden hour. It was the golden, golden hour. hour. Yeah. So I'm just sitting here like, okay, okay, it's birthday. Let me let me get it together because I got it. And he's like, you have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you sitting there? Set me up. Do you hear me? <laughs> so and me trying not to be ungrateful. I'm like, okay, yeah, it was fun. So I'm thinking. He's like, okay, come on, let's go walk. So I'm like, okay, then I'm still young. Like, it's okay. I'm, like, calm down. It's, it's not it's not the end yet. So Savannah's very pretty. So we walked through, like, this historic downtown area mm -hmm. and all the things. There was lights. So I'm just like, okay. It did still happen. He's like, so finally, we just walk in aimlessly. And I don't see no bulge in his pocket. Like, at this point, I'm, I'm like, looking. <laughs> I'm like, where's the ring? Or is it, like, does he just have it, like, slide <laughs> slitting in there? Like, is it just in his pocket? So finally, I realized it's not happening. Like, this ain't it. And so I'm like, I'm ready to go. It's mosquito time. Let's go. So then I just get silent. Oh, we broke up that night. I was like, oh, I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm not having it. I was like, this is it. I was like, for the second time? Yeah, for the second time, we broke up. I was like, I'm not doing this because you're playing games. You're playing with my whole heart. And I don't give it away easily. And I feel like right now, this is just not working out. And so now you can finish the story. <laughs> I had to give the people some background. Yeah. So one thing I did tell her was, when I propose to you, you're not going to know. Um, <laughs> Hello? Because <laughs> was real shocked. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that, the the picnic was a setup. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't to, I had already ordered the ring. Um, the ring wasn't there yet. So I was planning a, I was planning a proposal for our trip that we're gonna have in the fall to DC. Um, so did anything happen? Because she did break up with me that day. I did. I was, <laughs> I was like, I was like, man, why can't you just wait? <laughs> I'm like, it's it's gonna happen. I felt scammed, y'all. I felt I was, I was like, you just literally set me up for fail. You're like you had my expectations way up here. It was hot, and I was like lit. And it's so it. funny because uh, when we kind when we got back, everybody was like, <laughs> and I had a whole attitude. I was like, don't talk to me. <laughs> I walked in, I was like, don't talk to me. <laughs> don't look at me. Ain't nothing. I got a ring on. That's what I got a ring on. So we did go to um, DC, and. It was in November, right? Mm -hmm. It was in November for Zion's birth. It was Zion's birthday and Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So we went. I think we stayed at her cousin's. Mm -hmm. So I I planned like the proposal was already planned because there was a photographer I really liked in DC. I called him. I was like, Hey, I'm trying to do this. This is the time I'm trying to do it. That's how I found out about the Golden Hour. I didn't know about Golden Hour. So I said, he was like, all right, what do you want to do? I said, I want to do it at the, uh, what's that? What's that? The National Arboretum. Dan, the National Arboretum. Um, I said, that's where I want to do it. He's like, all right, cool, 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 cool. So we've been texting and calling the whole time. So we make it to Virginia. And, you know, she throwing me these jabs uh, when we were her cousin. I got it. I didn't forget about it. Uh, she <laughs> threw me these jabs. 
Because I, I don't know what they were talking about. And then she was like, um, Do you remember what it was? It wasn't a jab, first of all. It was a jab. So <laughs> while we were on vacation um, at my cousin's, the night before the proposal that I had no idea about, one of our friends, our, our friends got engaged. And um, somebody made the comment, my best friend made the comment, they were like, oh, they haven't even been dating that long. And I was like, leave my friend alone. Like, he know what he want. He ain't got to take forever to know what he want. Let him be great. No and so, it was, there was no shade. No. <laughs> was like, her cousin was like, no. Ooh. Yes. like, ooh. <laughs> and I was like, so I'm getting ready, putting in all this work, and she's going, okay, cool, cool, cool. Like, he was a big man. I was mad. Really in his feelings. I and mad. I was like, I don't see anything wrong with what I said. I was mad. Because I'm like, I just got your point him. He was like, no, I see it, I want it, I'm going to go after it. Right. And uh, <laughs> so after that happened, I was like, <laughs> you went you read out the whole thing? You didn't want to do it no more? No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I did so I so I spoke to my mother in law. I asked her that night. I was like, hey. And she, I showed her the ring and she was like, Oh, it's pretty. <laughs> She's so pretty. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and and then I told her, I was like, hey, uh, would you give me the privilege of marrying your daughter? She was like, Yes, son, yes. <laughs> what was she fake, y'all? And uh, <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I walked in there and I'm looking at her and I'm like, <laughs> Not I was Not so tea. So we wake up the next morning, and I'm like, "All right, so we we're gonna go to the." I didn't tell you where we we're going, right? I don't think so. Yeah, I didn't tell you where we we're going. I said, "All right, we're going somewhere." She's like, "Okay." Uh, I said, "Zion's coming too." So I took her and Zion. So I was driving. We're driving to the arboretum, and while we're, while I'm driving, I'm trying to text this guy. Mind you, we in a whole different state. I'm texting. I'm trying to make sure she doesn't see the ring. Because I had the ring in the camera bag. So the camera bag was right by her leg in the passenger seat. And I, I was like, man, I just hope she doesn't go into this bag. Because uh, if she goes into this bag, I'm going to have to pull off the <laughs> side of the road <laughs> and propose right now. So I'm just praying as I'm driving and I'm texting and I'm trying to make sure I'm getting where I'm going. And I'm like, please don't let her go in the bag. Please don't let her go in the bag. So we finally make it there. Did I skip anything? No, you're good. All right, so we finally make it there. And this man says he's running late. And I'm like, we in D.C. I'm like, brother, it's getting dark. <laughs> like, if we take these pictures, it's going to look all black. Um, so finally, he pulls up. And I see him. And I'm like, all right. So the spot where I wanted to take the pictures... A whole bunch of people started popping up. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So my heart got, I need I need somewhere to take these pictures. So he comes up, because I had the spot where the columns were, and I also had that little area down there. And I was like, it doesn't they don't know what down there is, baby. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um so he came in and then he was like, all right, uh, hey, I was like, we're taking family pictures. He was she was like, oh really? We're taking family pictures. I said, yeah, we're gonna take family pictures. So he's like, all right, where do you wanna take the family pictures? So we walked together um, and we got to this spot where there's like this bench and there was this tree. It literally looks like we're in the Lion King, right? Very pretty. And uh, then I dropped on one knee and then she started crying. And she was ugly crying. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Okay, the details about the ugly cry is unnecessary. <laughs> but what he didn't know is that I did see the ring. Um, she I, see I the see the ring. I she saw the ring. box. I saw the box. She saw the box. But let me tell y'all how bad I was. <laughs> I was traumatized from that whole July situation. I was like, you know what, Lord? Not today. I'm not getting my hooks up today because it could be a whole dog tag in that box. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. So I sat in, in oblivion because I was like, I'm not getting no. Mm -mm. Like so I seen the box and I was like, that's that, that's suspicious. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, cool. And so I didn't I didn't allow myself to get my hopes up, but 
um, the photographer and everything. It was very unexpected. I did ugly cry. Um, I'm a thug though. Don't, don't, don't let fool you. Um, but it was just the fact that after it all, everything that we had gone through, all of the drama that we experienced in the years prior, it in that moment, I was like, it took all of that, but now we're here. And I feel like here is right. This is this is what this is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've prayed for. And now it's happening. So the ugly cry wasn't because it was like, oh, this is great. It was just the moment where I was like, God, you were so faithful. Even in our disobedience, even in our failures, even in all of the things that we did that I know you were probably like, Lord, God, please forgive them. Because they don't even know no better. I'm like, this is what it was all for. So now we can actually do things the right way and have our relationship consecrated unto you, for you, with you at the center. Um, so it just brought everything full circle about everything full circle so i like to say our story is a redemption story that god still loves us and he still cares for us and despite all of the all of the the, the ups and downs and valleys and the, the mountains mm -hmm. i feel like we still were able to to to, to please god in our relationship um and so that that's what that ugly cry moment was for and now here we are a whole almost two years <laughs> into this thing, man. Yep. Yeah. Two years, so. That is so beautiful. Ooh. Touch my heart. Did it, girl? Shoot. <laughs> Child, I thought I was going to be in jail a couple times. I don't know. So, one question for you Was it worth the wait? Who, <laughs> child? <laughs> I would not advise this part. I, I don't recommend this ghetto over here, y'all. It's ghetto. Um, 100% would not recommend doing the things that I did, but it was worth it at the end of it, seeing everything come full circle. Yeah. Because it's funny, we literally ended up right where we started. Mm -hmm. Even with the moves, he went to South Florida, I went to North Florida, like we were miles and miles apart. Once we got back together and got married, we ended up right back in Orlando yeah. at the church where it started and literally got about the whole thing full circle. So now my whole family is where in the church with the, with the it's most of the same people um, in that community where it started. And it's beautiful because it's like, I can still get glory from this. Exactly. I can still show myself faithful in your mess. Yeah. And I feel like that's exactly what it, what it was. So it, it, in, the, in that sense, it was worth it. Um, would I do it again that way? No. Mm -mm. no. <laughs> <laughs> no we going to do it right the first time. Amen. Um, but yeah. yeah. You said it. Yeah. That's Ooh, it. That was good. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good. I am absolutely 100% yeah, that's on you. <laughs> so listen, I want y'all to give some advice to singles who are seeking marriage or in the dating <clears throat> field. It's a little rough out there. It is rough out the day what course. advice would you get though <laughs> I say enjoy your singleness okay enjoy getting to know you because there is no way that you can be in a marriage wholeheartedly if you don't know you and you don't love you you can't love somebody more than you love you so that's number one know who you are number two be patient it's out there it's gonna come. Amen. Um, I will say don't seek marriage. Let it find you. Mm -hmm. Um don't go after it because one of the things that I use that I see a lot is, you know, people saying, you know, I wanna get married, I wanna get married, I wanna get married. But what you're failing to realize is that the focus that you're that you're giving to the desire to be married is focused that you could be utilizing on something else. Mm -hmm. So focus on yourself, focus on God, and then when the time comes, the person will just pop up in your life. Show sure will, because I was not looking, y'all. I'm telling you. <laughs> um, but the thing is, too, I think 
the issue is, is that in our singleness, we desire more of the wedding than the marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, because we want to be pretty. We want to dress up. We want to do the bachelorette parties. We want to have, the, you know, we want to do all the things. And what we fail to realize is that's a moment. That is a moment. I have to wake up every day and choose to love this man when he throwing socks on the floor and I've been asked him 50 million times to pick him up. Or when I wet the floor after my shower and he's like, you gonna make me fall. Like, it is work. Marriage is work. And it's, if you desire actual marriage under the covenant of God where you know that this is it and there is no opportunity for divorce and y'all in this for the long haul, it's work. And I think that we forget about that because you got two people, yeah, you might love this person, y'all might spend every waking hour together, but you don't know somebody until you sharing your bed and all your personal space with this person. That's a lot. It is a lot because they're literally, they're literally now an extension of you. It's like they have their own upbringing. They have their own way of doing things because they're adults too. And you're mashing, you're, you're mixing that into what you already have. So you have to choose daily that, okay, Lord, he, he, she's stressing me out today, but I love them anyway. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of sacrifice. It's a lot of dying to yourself. It's beautiful, but it's work. I heard you. (laughs) 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 Any closing thoughts? I feel like you can say something. He's he got a whole word about it. No, I'm <laughs> 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 All right, well, that's a wrap for this video. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed uh, not only this video, but this series, and I hope to continue it in the future. So thank you guys once again for watching, and thank you for joining me on my channel. Absolutely. And we'll see you guys in the next one.